So we're talking about the coronavirus. And so this right here is what happens when you cough or sneeze when you have the coronavirus. This balloon is kind of representing your lungs. And inside your lungs, if you look right here, there's a little bit of saliva on the bottom of the balloon. So we're gonna see what happens when this balloon pops, which represents when someone sneezes or coughs. So here we go. The balloon should pop right away once I get the fire near it. And so come over here and look right here. Look at what's on the window. So this is from a cough or a sneeze. All of these droplets of water, they're on surfaces. So if you touch that and then you go and you touch your face, not even knowing that's spreading the disease to you or it gets in your eyes. All of these droplets could also go towards somebody's eyes or face or mouth. And this is how the infection spreads, either touching a surface that someone has coughed or sneezed on or these droplets getting in the air and getting all over you. Um, in the area when someone coughs or sneezes or they are infected. So what we're gonna do today is talk about the coronavirus disease 2019, also known as COVID-19. CO stands for corona, VI stands for virus, and D stands for disease. So what we're gonna talk about is what we should be worried about how it spreads, and maybe some of the symptoms today. So this is the CDC website. CDC stands for the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So one of the main things that we need to worry about is when you're near someone who's infected. When someone is infected and they are within six feet of you, when they sneeze or cough, the droplets that they put into the air from their saliva or their mucus can leave and be an aerosol, these droplets can be inhaled by you or land on surfaces near you. If you come in contact with these surfaces, you then touch that surface and then you rub the virus near your mouth, nose, or your eyes. That's why it's very important to keep washing your hands during this outbreak in your area. So when people get sick, it, the virus makes them produce mucus, makes them want to sneeze. That's how the virus gets spread. And because this is a newer virus and your body is not used to it, it spreads very easily. And it is also a virus that causes these conditions where it makes you want to sneeze or cough. The advisement for if you have symptoms is that there is a two to 14 day window after you are exposed. And so some of the things that you're looking for are if you have a fever, a cough, or shortness of breath. So if you feel like you're in this situation where you've come in contact with somebody with COVID-19 or the coronavirus, you should call your healthcare professional and they will do an adequate test to see if you are actually infected by the coronavirus. So here's a quick little graphic right here, the coronavirus disease. And so they're looking for fever, cough, shortness of breath. It does not mean that you have it if you have those things, but it's a really good idea to go talk to your doctor and get it checked out. So when we look on the CDC website about prevention and treatment, there is no vaccine right now for this disease, but they are working on it as quickly as they can. So one of the main ways to not risk yourself in getting sick is you should avoid close contact with people who are sick, Try to avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or your sneeze. Usually you put it by into your elbow. You sneeze into your elbow so that you do not get it on your hands. And throw your own tissues away in the trash. A lot of times parents try to clean up after their children and they infect themselves that way. You can clean and disinfect the objects around your house, the surfaces, your doorknobs. They say that Lysol and Clorox wipes help out a lot in that situation. And then other recommendations and people who are infected should wear a face mask, not people who are not infected. We wanna make sure that there's enough face masks out there for the health workers who are near people who are infected. And so that is more important for them to wear them instead of you doing your everyday life. The most important thing is to wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. 
So let's follow these five steps for washing your hands. So what we're gonna do is we're going to wet our hands first with the clean water. Then you can get some soap on your hands. You lather your hands, and what I recommend doing is rubbing your hands together like you normally would wash your hands, and then you interlock your fingers to get the spaces between your fingers nice and clean. Then you rub behind your hands, the back of your hands, and around your thumb. Rub and grab your thumb on both sides, get all of the soap around your thumb, and then the last step they say is to take your fingernails and rub them on your palms in a circular motion. This helps to get any of the virus or anything on your hands out from underneath your fingernails. And then thoroughly rinse your hands and then either dry your hands on a clean towel or you can air dry them. Now, if you do not have any soap or water, hand sanitizer can help out, but make sure that it has 60% alcohol. And then when you get a chance to wash your hands in a sink with soap and water, you should do that also because the germs spread very easily and it's very important to keep clean hands to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Thank you for joining me for Your Dad Academy. This channel gives you a way to talk to your children about science. So your kids probably know that wood lights on fire very easily. But did they ever think that a peanut lights on fire? Let's try to see if we can get this to go. So we want you to have discussions about science. Why does a peanut light on fire? So join me for Your Dad Academy. This is a new channel where you can have ways to talk to your children about science.